Hi, my name is Susan Karcheski and I'm a published jewelry designer and owner of Perfectly Unique Design Studio and Boutique in Pearson, Indiana. And I am going to teach you today how to make an easy wire wrapped bezel pendant. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters, 16 gauge round wire, 26 gauge round wire, a stone of your choice, medium sized, round nose pliers, I have two examples here of different sizes of round nose pliers, and a steel block or anvil and measuring tape. To begin we're going to cut off from our 16 gauge wire a piece that is approximately three times the size of the stone that we're working with. So we'll get that measured and I'll show you how I judge if it's three times. I'm going to cut this off here okay, and we're going to straighten out that wire. So here's the, the stone I'm working with. There's one, two, three. So it's approximately three times the size of the stone. Okay, now that we've cut the first wire, we're going to make another wire exactly like it. So you can actually take that first wire and use it to cut your second wire. So we're going to line that up, take our wire cutters, cut that off. So this will be the main two wires that we're going to use to make the bezel around the pendant. And then we're going to use this 26 gauge wire to weave and attach the two wires together. So we're going to cut that now. We're going to use about a yard. We need more of this wire, so you're going to cut 36 inches of this thin 26 gauge wire. So let me get that cut. And Okay, and we'll put this aside for now, over here. And what we're going to do to begin is line up these two wires, straighten them out, and we're going to start probably, we want to make a bale. So these two wires up here are going to make our bale. So we want to start probably about two and a half to three inches from the top of the wire. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with one and we're going to do the other one exactly like it to match. You can use round nose pliers for this to make loops or if you feel more comfortable you can also use needle nose pliers. It's whatever you prefer and this is another pair of round nose, really tiny nose, round nose pliers and uh, you can decide what you like to make loops with. So I use the bigger pliers but to start. So I'm going to take the wire and wrap it around my needle nose pliers until I get like a loop. Okay, and we're just going to continue making loops in a straight line. And you can start each one, maybe you're about a half inch from where you ended your loop. So we're going to start the next one. Bend it and continue around and you can help it along with your pliers so that you get a nice round loop and you want the bottom of this to be flat so this should be like a straight line once we get going so if you like to make loops with the uh, round nose pliers you can do that I would use this part of the plier the roundest thickest part your loops need to be big enough to go over the sides of the stone that you're working with. So you don't want too small of a loop. So we're going to keep going and we're again we're about a half inch from the last loop. We take our pliers and we go and we start making another loop. And these don't have to be perfect because it's a, it's a very forgiving pattern once you get it together. So we're just going to straighten out the bottom as we go along. Keep 
keep making our loops and you continue this to get all the way around the pendant okay now I've made all my loops and I'm going to take the loops and measure it around the cabochon and make sure that it's going to be long enough and that looks about perfect because we're going to tie this off right here and then start and make our bail we're going to have a very small bail on this one probably should have used a little bit more wire but we'll get through that so now we want to take our other piece of wire that we had cut earlier that was exactly the same size and we're going to make the same type of loops that we made and since this one was a little small uh, as far as what I have left to make the bale, I would have, I would actually cut a wire that's a little bit longer. But for this example here, we're going to use what we have cut already. So, so we're going to start our bale, our first loop exactly where we did on the other wire. So I kind of measure, and then take my wire and make my first loop. Again, you can use your round nose pliers if you feel more comfortable. I am just feel very comfortable using regular needle nose pliers. Then you straighten out the bottom and kind of make this straight all the way along. So your loops should kind of line up with your other ones. And you can periodically check that. Again, remember to start your half inch from the other loop. Bring it around. Complete our other loop. The 16 gauge wire is nice and strong and that's what you want. You don't want to use a flimsy wire to go around a stone and hold it in. So we can sort of line this up to see that we're on track. Okay and we just keep going till we get to the bottom and we have two wires that look exactly the same. Now we have the two wires that are exactly the same and we're ready to attach them together to make our bezel. So you actually want to turn this so that the loops are out. See they all kind of line up and don't worry about the size variation in the loops. This pattern is very forgiving and you won't see the difference when you get the bezel around the pendant. So we take our 26 gauge wire and fold it in half. So we have the loop at the top here. I'm going to put that over these two pieces here. When you wrap these two together, you don't want to be extremely tight. You need a little space in between. So to start, we're going to make an X and cross over here just to get our wire somewhat on. Okay. Okay, there we go. And you want to kind of hold your wire apart so it's, it's not completely together to get going. And so you take the first wire and go underneath to the second place. And it's like a ladder. You're just going to weave one side around loosely between each loop. We're just using one side of the 26 gauge wire right now. We're kind of holding it apart a little bit. Okay, so it's not extremely tight. And we get this one all the way Again, check and make sure that you're not completely, you leave a little about one eighth of an inch between when you're wrapping here. Okay, so keep it kind of loose. Just go all the way down with the one wire in between each loop. And then we get to the bottom, we're just going to leave that wire we can wrap it around here loosely just a couple times. We go back up to the top. Pull this a little tighter because we're going to start this other wire now. So we're going to go down around the back around. So start same thing here. We start at this loop 
and then keep going down in between each loop. This holds the two wires together and you're kind of making like an X in the center of the wire. But as you can see, I'm not holding it really tight in the middle. Just kind of weave that wire through each loop like you did the other one. You get to the bottom, you can wrap this around the two wires here. Okay, so now the two wires are connected and we're going to take our pendant and we're going to mold this bezel around the pendant. And the reason you have it kind of loose in the middle is because you're going to bend these loops over the sides of the pendant. So you don't want it so tight that it's not flexible. You want it kind of flexible in the middle. So you can kind of mold these loops into like a little half circle around your stone. As you can see, it should look like they're leaning in. And that's what will make the bezel around your stone or piece of glass in this case. So we get that in. We need to get to the top here. And that's what we should look like. If you want to use some tape, you can also take some painter's tape or electrical tape that's very thin and wrap this in at this point before you make your bale. So now we have the bale at the top and we have our bezel completely around the pendant and we have this leftover 26 gauge wire that you can just wrap around a couple times it was what I do and just tuck that in so we're going to cut off that wire here and you can just take your pliers and tuck the little ends in so you can't see them and that it's not pokey. Okay, now we're going to make our bale at the top. So what you did was connect the end around the top of these wires to complete your bezel circle. Another thing you can do to make it lay over the stone is take your pliers and just kind of shape these circles so that they're over the stone nice and tight after you wrapped it around. And you can tweak them. Make sure they look nice and round. That's why I said don't worry about the loops when you're making them because you can adjust those with your pliers at the end. So now it's completely in and, and all the way around the back and all the way around the front to form your bezel. We're going to make a tiny bale at the top. So you take your two wires that you're left with, kind of mold them around, make a little loops with both the wires, and then you have just enough wire to go around these bales to keep them in place. Just enough. Like I said, I probably cut mine just a tad short, so if you want to go three and a half times your stone with your 16 gauge wire, I would probably do that. So there we have our bale at the top. We're just shaping it now. And we have that one more wire to wrap around here. Okay, we're going to wrap that around. Okay, and sometimes your bale at the top may get out of shape. Now we can use our round nose pliers to shape that loop a little better. A 
make them even. Then I like to open them up a little bit to make a nice bale. Like I said, you can fine tune your loops however you want them to to be a little more even. You can make sure they're pulled over on both sides over the stone good and there's not a lot of room for that stone to get out of this. So you have a nice bezel pendant. Thank you for watching my video and I look forward to teaching you more jewelry lessons from jewelrylessonvideos.com.